Hi everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much for watching. So uh, you can probably tell from the title, this is my labor and delivery story. Yep, uh, we made it. My last pregnancy update video was right, thank god. I was so, so ready for our little boy to make his arrival. So I will show him to you guys at the end of this video. I'm just going to, I didn't want to have him under the lights for too long, so I'm just going to share with you my story and then I will introduce you to little William. So it all begins on a Saturday, a Saturday September 5th, which was my original due date actually. I was a little bit tired of being kind of cooped up all the time and I was just so ready to have this baby. Um, me and my partner went out to do a little bit of shopping, uh, pick up some fall decor things. So we were out for a few hours of the day, just walking around, uh, picked up some goodies and I still didn't feel anything. Um, I had a really good dinner with my parents that night and went home and I was feeling a little bit off but nothing like, wasn't. I wasn't having any contractions or anything. Um, my partner and I were lying in bed, we decided we'd watch an episode of The Simpsons before we went to bed. Um, it was 11 o'clock on the dot and I just kind of leaped out of bed and was like, something is wrong. I do not feel right. And my water broke. <laughs> just like that and so it was very it was very it was a very strange feeling um I, I wasn't sure quite sure at first but then it was very evident that yep yeah, my water broke and let's go to the hospital because that's what they tell you to do even if you're not experiencing like active labor so we packed up grabbed the bags and went over to the hospital my partner called my mother <laughs> and she met us there and um went into admitting, was talking with a wonderful nurse who kind of went through the, through the tests and checked uh, checked baby's motion, make sure everything was, was good, checked his heartbeat, um, checked my vitals to make sure that I was good, and then tend to check to make sure that it actually was my water that had broken. Yes, it was, but because I wasn't experiencing any contractions, they said that they had one or two things I could do. They could, I could stay and they could induce labor or I could go home and wait for 24, up to maximum of 24 hours, or then they would call me back and induce labor. And they strongly recommended going home and letting like labor happen on its own. So, talked about it, all three of us, and decided, you know what, I'm not feeling any contractions right now, so let's go home. So shortly after we got home, um, at this point it would have been probably around 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, so like 1 or 2 o'clock Sunday morning, and I started to experience contractions pretty much as soon as we got home from the hospital. But they were like 15, 20 minutes apart and I could easily breathe through them. So I was like, this is gonna be a long, long day because they said that they call at 11 o'clock Sunday night if I hadn't gone into labor on my own to for me to come in to schedule an induction, well, for, to have the induction because they don't like you to go um, more than 24 hours without being induced after water breaks because of chance of infection, which is actually kind of funny. Well, I'll get to that after. But so um, I was experiencing interactions. It was a long night. Didn't get really any sleep because they were like 15, 20 minutes apart. So by the time I would kind of settle down, get to sleep, then I'd have a contraction, it would wake me up. And it just kept going like that. Finally, it was about 10 or 11, about 10.30 I think, um, Sunday morning when my contractions were about five minutes, four or five minutes apart, but they weren't lasting for very long. They were only about 30, 40 seconds. And they say that when you have contractions that are four minutes apart, um, yeah, I think it's, what was it my doctor said? It was, it's the 411 rule. She said it's the if contractions are four minutes apart, lasting for a minute and going for an hour. So I went for an hour and a half having contractions that were four minutes apart, but they were only about 40 seconds. And it was starting to get a little unbearable. So I and my partner decided, let's go to the hospital again, see if I've dilated any further from where I had been from my appointment. We were thinking, okay, you know, this, this could be it. So I went in went through, saw another nurse, she did checked all the vitals, everything was good, and then they had to wait for a doctor um, to do a cervical check, and then she was, you're still only three centimeters dilated. And I was, in so, I was so uncomfortable, but they weren't going to admit me. They said that I could go home, 
or I could just kind of wander around the hospital, but I wouldn't have a room, I wouldn't be admitted, I'd just kind of just be walking around. So, once again, we decided to go home because, well, we thought this could be a while. Um, we were going to have to come back at 11 anyway um, if it hadn't progressed enough. So we decided, let's go home. There, I can breathe through them. Um, it's still pretty painful. Didn't have much of a break because they were, they were four minutes apart, but much better than kind of just trying to walk around a hospital. So my mother was there again and I just talked to her and I said, well, why don't you um, come by the house and, you know, we'll try and play some cards or play a game or something to pass the time because I can't really focus on anything because, you know, the contractions are every four minutes apart. So it, it's, it sounded like a good plan. Um, she left, she was gonna pick me up some, some drinks, um, some waters and sodas and stuff to have on hand and, um, by the time she got to the house, my contractions were a minute apart and they were only lasting for about 20 seconds, but they were a minute apart. So there was, there was no break in between them. I would have contraction, you know, breathe, it would be like, oh, okay, done. And then it would start again. And it was per just increasing in pain. Just, I... I wasn't expecting that at all. From what I have read, it seemed like that slow progression and once you kind of got to the four minutes and then it was like, okay, it was time to go. And to have them one minute apart, it was like, I was not expecting that to happen and it was the worst pain ever. Like, they they don't lie when they when they say that it's, it's quite painful. Um, I just thought, how can this get any worse? I wasn't necessarily sure if I was going to do any drugs before that. Um, I just wanted to take it as it came, but I was in so much pain that I just immediately knew, I was like, I'm going to have to have some drugs because this is so, so painful and I was getting no break, no time to collect myself, to build my energy. I hadn't had any sleep because you remember, it all started Saturday night and this is Sunday afternoon and I'm operating on no sleep. I wouldn't have had any sleep since Friday, that Friday night. So I was exhausted and in so much pain and the only, I couldn't take a bath which would probably have helped a lot, but they don't want you to take a bath when you are having, um, when your water is broken because it can increase uh, the risk of infection even more. So I had a shower which helped significantly. I was in, the, in a hot shower until basically the hot water ran out and then shortly there, short, like a couple hours later, I had another hot shower, but they were still like one minute apart lasting for like 30 seconds. And I was losing my mind. Like I was basically literally howling in pain. My partner, poor guy, he did not know what to do to help me. There really was nothing he could do. Like he was trying to give me a back rub, but that just felt even worse when he was touching me. I was just like, oh God, no, don't. Like I'm so much pain. The only thing I could do was just make some vocalization noises because it was just, I didn't know how else to cope breathing through it wasn't working because I wasn't having enough time to collect my breath in between. Uh, so this went on, this went on until I'd say four, four o'clock or five o'clock. This was about five, it was about five hours of contractions that were that painful. I don't know how I did it. Um, at this point my mother had called um, her niece, my cousin, who's a nurse at that hospital I'd be delivering at, and she said, y you gotta get you got to get her into the hospital because this could be what labor is for her and it you know it might it just sounds like it's not going to be like the book it doesn't sound like they're going to stop they're going to, the contractions are going to slow down to four minutes apart and it's just you got to get her in there before before she dilates too far and she can't get an epidural because it, it things it would not be good so we went back in for the third time uh, my mother brought me in this time because we figured, you know what, if this is so bad and I have to come back again in all of this pain, I, we weren't, I just wasn't going to have my partner go through that again. So my mother brought me in. It was just ridiculous. She waited with me in the room. I was just, you know, in so much pain, like basically crying in pain. Um, the doctor came pretty quickly at this point to check to see how dilated I was. And I was about six centimeters at that time so it was a really really good thing that I came in because they whisked me right away to the delivery room um, and I got an epidural pretty quickly after being there it was so hard to deal with um, because I was getting no no relief in between but once the epidural kicked in oh my god it was magic like you could still feel all the pressure uh, I could still had to kind of breathe through the contractions 
but the the pain was gone like the really sharp pain was gone it was it was so much pain relief that I could actually take a little nap because I was only six centimeters um, that, that gave me the epidural which the epidural too was a bit of a struggle um, because you're supposed to keep completely still I mean they're sticking I didn't obviously I'm not looking because the guy the doctor is behind me and they're sticking this giant needle in your back and you're supposed to keep com completely still but when the contractions were happening happening so quickly and I could stay still as long as the contraction wasn't happening, but then my instinct when the contraction was happening was to move, to, you know, try to move away from the pain. So it was uh, quite messy. I saw at the, I saw at one point when I when they had me move over, I saw like all the blood everywhere. And I, oh my god! From but I didn't had hadn't felt any of that. And honestly, the little bit of pain I felt from getting the epidural was nothing compared to the pain from the contractions. So after after that, I got a, they let me have a nap, which was wonderful because I think everything probably kicked in and it was probably close to six o'clock in the evening on Sunday. And I had a little nap and they checked my cervix again and I was at 10 centimeters, I think around eight or eight o'clock, eight or eight or nine, somewhere around there. And they um, had this checklist and basically, at, even though I was, at, I was fully dilated, um, I wasn't showing signs I was ready to push yet, so they were going to give me about another hour, hour and a half until I would start pushing based on their little checklist unless things progressed on their own. So I really just got to relax, kind of breathe through the contractions, but it was so, it was just, it was so bearable, really, that's all I can say is that it was very bearable with the epidural. And my partner was there, my mother was there, and we were chatting with the nurses and stuff and just being very calm and relaxed. And then around 10.30, they said, okay, we're gonna have you start to push. Um, and it was, I didn't really feel it at first. Um, like I could feel it, like, okay, the contraction is and you push. And I was doing like all I could into pushing, but it just, it hadn't progressed enough yet, I guess. So it was really slow going for a while. Um, and I was pushing for a very, very long time. Um, I things were pro progressing pretty well. The doctor didn't get there, I don't think, until 11:30. I think the doctor got there around 11:30, so like an hour after I'd been been pushing, and there was some progress, but not a lot. Um, the baby was actually in the wrong position, um, so they want them to come out with their he head facing down, um, so that they're looking at the floor. And my little boy was facing up. So that was a challenge. They were going to have to try and turn him as he was coming out. Um, and he at one point had his arm kind of stuck too. So I'm pushing, they're trying to turn him. Um, and then where he was at one point caused a severe leg cramp in my right leg. Like the epidural kind of um, helps with the pain kind of above where the baby would come out. Um, and not nothing below. So the leg pain was excruciating. Um, I wasn't, I honestly, I had that cliched moment of like, I can't do this, I can't do this. And trying to, to push him out while the dog was trying to turn him. They didn't know if it was gonna be able to happen. They were calling back up. Um, wasn't sure if I was gonna need a C-section, if he was gonna be able to come out, um, if they would need a team to try and turn him. I was pushing. Um, finally, um, got him, got pushed out enough um, and then I had to stop which was a little bit scary because the doctor told me like you know when I tell you to, there's like there's something going on and when I tell you to stop you have to stop no matter what so what turned it it turned out that he had the core wrap right around his neck like when I heard that afterwards it was so terrifying but the doctor was wonderful she managed to handle all of that that beautifully um, I did have to get cut which she told me kind of quickly was kind of like, I'm going to have to do this and you're not going to feel anything. And then afterwards we'll stitch you all up. And I was just like, I don't even care. I don't even care at this point. There's like eight people looking right up my hoo-ha. So I don't even care. Let's just do this. Um, finally, I think I was just at this point, I was in so much pain from my leg. My partner was there trying to hold my leg up for me. The nurses were like yelling at me to hold my own leg. And I was in so much pain trying to hold my other leg. My partner was holding my leg back for me on the other side. And I was just finally like, okay, I'm going to do this. I am going to do this. The baby is coming. So pushed, 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 pushed. And he was born at 1245 in the morning on Monday. September 7th, uh, which, was, which was Labor Day, which was funny. It really wasn't in labor on Labor Day, but he was born on Labor Day. Um, 
and he it was just that beautiful magical moment where they lay him down on your chest and it's just like wow this is this is real this 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 happened then they got them all they were getting them all cleaned up um, they let me go have a shower which was amazing but yeah there's there's a lot of kind of gross things that go along with giving birth which I really won't go into detail with but I mean if you've read anything about that or if you've given birth yourself you know it's pretty gross but after I had the shower I felt so good I felt just amazing and I sat down sitting there like I wasn't it wasn't in pain it wasn't in that much pain I mean the epidural was still kind of in effect I had the IV still strapped to me um, they had stitched me up, which was a little bit painful, obviously, but it wasn't nearly as bad as anything else. And then they wheeled me and, and the boy to our room, and uh, that's where that's where we we stayed. And things were were pretty pretty good. Um, he, he had a bit of an infection, and that's why I was kind of laughing earlier when they said about you know couldn't have a bath because of the infection. And he had an infection, and. Oh, it was a brutal time. We were in the hospital longer than we... We were in the, in the hospital longer than I thought we were going to be because he needed so many antibiotics and he had this shunt in his head and it was just so sad and we just thought we were never getting out of there. Um, but then everything came back and, you know, everything was negative and we got to go home and it was so wonderful to take him home and... Yeah, it's been exhausting, for sure. So we've... we've He's been born for, for, so he's a week old. We've only been home with him since Thursday afternoon. So still getting used to routine, still getting into a schedule. It's, it, I'm just exhausted. Um, feels good to put makeup on. I did use makeup um, when I was in the hospital and it made me feel so much better just to get a shower and to put my face on. And I just like, I just, I just felt like, yeah, I can, I can do this. I can handle all this. So yeah, that was, that was it. That was uh, the story of the birth of William Robert James. Um, we had the name picked out for a long, long time. Um, I always wanted to have a boy named William, so I've got him. Super emotional right now, um, if you can't tell. It's one of those wonderful side effects where like every little thing will just make me like ball, <laughs> which I guess is, you know, completely normal and to be expected um, but anyway yeah um, everything's been good with me I've been healing pretty well um, I had an effect I have an infection now actually I have a, a UTI which knowing me is not surprising I mean I figured I would have to get some sort of thing happening uh, I was just starting to feel better um, and then I started to have that, like, I constantly need to pee thing, so I had to go to a walk-in clinic on Sunday and got prescribed antibiotics, but now I'm starting to do better. Um, I've only been taking the antibiotics since yesterday, so it's still a little uncomfortable and painful, but, you know, me and my boy, <laughs> we've, we've had our infections. We're, we're, we're strong folk. We're dealing with it. Um, but other than that, I am healing, healing pretty, pretty nicely. Um, not really in a lot of pain. Um, you know, there's there's still like that awkward, uncomfortable feeling um, from having the stitches, but other than that, like it's been it's been a lot better than I expected it would be. But that's it. So I hope that made sense. I've been a little bit rambly and incoherent because I haven't gotten a lot of sleep, operating on a very very different like sleep schedule. But anyway, that is uh, that is all for my updates, and now I will introduce you to little William. So here he is. Here is little William. He's asleep right now. Yay. So I'm not going to have him here for very long. But just wanted to show you guys his precious little face. I'm going to do post pictures of him on Instagram too. If you guys um, have Instagram and want to see the little baby pictures. Because I just think he's so, so adorable. So this is my little man. Little William. So let me know if you have any questions, if there's anything else you would like to hear about my labor and delivery story or anything you would like me to talk about regarding my, my little boy and my pregnancy, 
anything like that just let me know um, I'll get back to you guys as soon as possible and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye